If you are interested in science in general, you're interested in becoming a scientist and you want to publish, you're eventually going to ask yourself, what is peer review and how does it work? So in today's video, I'm going to answer that very question for you and explain the entire process behind peer review. So to get started, what is peer review? Peer review is essentially a process where other researchers in the field review a journal article to ensure that there is quality both in how it is written, but also primarily in the study design and how the results were interpreted, and to make sure that the, the entire article is sound both from a scientific perspective and from the way that it was written. There are a lot of benefits of peer review, even though peer review can be a frustrating process. And so the biggest benefit is it ensures credibility, typically at least, it ensures credibility and reliability of the scientific research being published. So at least instead of just putting something out there, like for example, in social media, you can see whatever you want to see. If you want to believe something, you can find someone telling you that that is what it is. And that doesn't work in science because you don't want people just analyzing something any way that they wanna analyze it, not acknowledging the limitations, not figuring out what could be really going on and just taking a sample size of one and acting like it's generalizable to the whole population. That is not credible and it's not reliable science. And so this is going to help ensure that what you're reading seems valid and is actually valid research that's being done. It also overall improves research quality. And this is really important to make sure that the, our research overall is of good value and that action can actually be taken from our research. If we just put out there whatever we want to put out there, then we can't really have people taking action from it because then it becomes as dangerous as like non-doctors acting like doctors on social media. And it also encourages constructive criticism. And this is something that if you want to be successful as a scientist, you really need to learn how to both take and give constructive criticism. And so I'm not gonna say that every reviewer out there is constructive in the way that they give their feedback, but the process is meant to be a constructive process. And I think of it often as a, as a level of review of my paper or a level of editing of my paper. I don't try and focus on trying to get past peer review, but I use peer review as a process to help me edit my paper to make it even better. And if you have that perspective on it, most of the time it's gonna go really well for you in publishing. So there are three different types of peer review. The different types of peer review really talk about who knows who in this situation. So probably one of the most common types of peer review is a single blind. So reviewers know the author, but the author doesn't tend to know the reviewers. This is, I would say, probably most of the peer review situations I've been in is mo most of the time they know who I am submitting the paper, but I have no idea who actually gave me the reviews. Um, so sometimes you get a lot of the like, feelings of online comments where you have the an anonymity of the online comments where the person feels like they're anonymous so they can be meaner than they would probably be in real life. You also have a double blind. And so this is something that has been a push more recently, like within the last decade in science, is having double blind. So the reviewers and the authors don't know who each other are. This is really helpful because in single blind study, a reviewer can be influenced by the prestige or non-prestige of the author. So if this is the author's first time publishing and they're not in a well-known lab, the reviewer can be like, well, they don't really know what they're talking about. Or if the author is a really, really large, well-known lab um, and you know there's big authors on it, all of a sudden you may do less of a rigorous job reviewing it because you think it's going to be a good paper already. And so this is where double blind comes in because it's really you judging, as a reviewer, judging the science. And then as an author, I have no idea who reviewed my paper. And then you have open reviews, and this is where both parties are aware of each other's identities. I've never been in a situation where this has been the case, and I don't think it is performed very regularly today, but that is a possible situation. So then how does the review process work? This is what we wanna get to, right? So the first thing you're gonna do is write your paper and submit your paper to a journal. And if you're struggling with writing your paper, check out my scientific research paper checklist. It's a checklist that walks you step-by-step step how to do all the things you need to do to write and submit your paper. Once you have it, 
It also tells you all the things you need to like gather together and have ready to pour submission. Once you have that, you get to submit your paper to a journal. Then the editor is going to do an initial screening for it. So they're going to see, does this paper seem like it fits my journal? Is it written well enough that I'm willing to send it out for peer review? So if when it comes in, it's incomprehensible because it is written so poorly, they're probably going to do what's called a desk rejection, where, which is where it's rejected at this stage. This is where it never goes for peer review. It's just automatically rejected. You can also have a really well-written paper that gets desk rejected, and that is when it's not a good fit for the journal. This can sometimes be where you submit to a journal that's just a way higher impact journal than the paper that you wrote. And so you need to find a journal that's a more clear link to the paper that you wrote. It can also be the case when you submit it to a journal and that is not the theme or type of paper that the journal selects. So an example that happened to me is there were two kind of sister journals in analytical chemistry. And right as I was submitting, they kind of changed the way they did it, but they hadn't updated their website. And so when I submitted to one, I got a desk rejection telling me it belonged with the other one. And so I submitted it to the other one and it ended up getting published in that journal. So that those can be two of the main reasons you get desk rejected. So if they agree to go for peer review, the editor will then select peer reviewers and send the manuscript and all of the materials to a peer reviewer. Now, you may have to actually suggest peer reviewers when you submit your manuscript. You may have to say, these are the peer reviewers I suggest. And a lot of times they'll ask you to do this because editors are really busy. And so if you suggest people that would be good in your field to do, then that is, it takes one more thing off of them and they can go to those people first. You can also sometimes ask for certain reviewers to be excluded. And I have done this on papers and this is typically where there are conflicts of interest um, and or the people, there's been some bad conflicts in the past between different groups, or there's a reason to not include them as a reviewer. And so we've had this where I was working on a paper and it basically directly contradicted a previous person's work. And from publishing or from presenting it at a conference, I had, could already tell that they were very opposed to my research, which is understandable from a human sense. But we did put them as an as an excluded reviewer, asking the editors not to send it to them because we were worried that we would get bad reviews just because it goes against their what they've done before. And some people can take that really well and realize, OK, these are the factors why it goes against that. And some people don't take that as well. So once it, they select the peer reviews or, and send the paper to the peer reviewers, the reviewers will then evaluate the manuscript. So they're looking at the manuscript to see is the manuscript of quality, was the study designed well, are the conclusions that you are saying actually what the results present, what the data presents, and are you contextualizing these conclusions or are you cherry picking what you want to say to make the story you want to make? The reviewers then submit their evaluations back to the editor. And then the editor makes a decision. And so once that decision is made, if necessary, authors will revise their manuscript and submit responses to the reviewers. And you repeat until the final decision is made by the editor. And so there are a couple different types of decisions that can be made by the editor after peer review. The, there are four main types. And so the first one is accepted. And these can be called different things depending on the journal, but there's four main types. First one's accepted, which means we've accepted your papers, no changes needed. This is very rare to get in your first response back from peer review. I've never gotten an accepted paper immediately. I think it's very uncommon to get an accepted paper immediately. Usually someone is going to have some, even if it's minor, minor edits, they're going to have some edits or revisions requested. The next one is minor revisions. So minor versus major revisions. I know when I, with a lot of people I worked with, the separation between these two is minor revisions tends to be things that don't require additional experiments, i.e. could you sit down in a day or two and complete these revisions? Or is this going to take you three months, four months to get additional data to complete these revisions. So minor revisions, typically you're, the study is still the study. We just need to add things in or we need to tweak the way things were said or take things out, anything like that. 
The next one is major revisions. So major revisions, and again, different people can do different things. So I've gotten major revisions once and it was really like I sat down in three hours and after that the paper was accepted. So I wouldn't get hung up on minor versus major revisions. Major revisions tend to be more where like major rewrites would have to happen or additional data would need to be collected to support the study. And then finally, you can get rejected. And so they can go through peer review and say, thank you, but we're no longer interested in this paper. Please seek, you know, you can try and publish it somewhere else. They still tend to give you the peer reviews for this. So typically what my grad advisor, his ideology between a major revision and a rejection was if it's going to take you more than six months to a year to accomplish the revisions, it should be a rejection and then submitted as a new paper versus if you could within three to six months get the data you needed, it should be a major revision. So different editors, different papers all treat these separately. But if it is rejected, then you need to go through and still make those changes. Don't just take that manuscript and submit it into a different journal. So those are the components of the peer review process. If you're interested in learning more about peer review and you're interested in actually writing your research article, I recommend checking out my Research Mastery Academy. It is a one-stop shop for everything you need for research. It's basically all of my content, all of my courses in one place, and it even includes the PowerPoints that are in these videos. These videos are also in my Research Master Academy. It's all searchable, but you can actually download these PowerPoints. So if you're ever wondering, can you just grab that information? You can actually download these PowerPoints. They're included as attachments to these YouTube videos. I hope this video was helpful, and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.